Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's hard not to read this story and point out the adolescent selfishness of Jesus' disciples. Jesus shares with them something that is very personal and troubling. He's going to be handed over, condemned to death, and suffer at the hands of those who will mock him, spit on him, and kill him. He's doing it all for their sake, pointing out all of this out so that the disciples understand, but instead of appreciating what Jesus tells them, instead of caring and offering comfort, instead they think about themselves. Sort of reminds me of a two-sentence story that I heard recently. A father was driving home in a storm one night and his car got struck by lightning. When he got home and told his son about it, the son said, We should go buy a lottery ticket right away. I heard that it's the same odds of winning the lottery as getting hit by lightning. The son was only worried about himself. And in the gospel, the disciples are still all worried about themselves, about how great they are going to be when Jesus comes into his kingdom. And it's not just James and John who are acting this way. All of them are. The ones who don't ask first get jealous that they hadn't thought to ask what the others did. All of them suffer to understand what is truly happening in the ministry of Jesus Christ. It's true, and many biblical commentators have pointed out, it is here in the story where Jesus' closest disciples should be starting to understand where Jesus' ministry is going. But instead, they're only worried about themselves. Their dreams of glory are not in line with the kingdom of God and God's dreams. They can't see what's going on. But I'm not completely convinced that they can. You and I get it because we've heard the full story. We have already witnessed the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but the disciples in the gospel story today have not. They have no idea really how big of a thing that Jesus is making them a part of. They have no idea that they are part of the greatest miracle that has happened since the world was first created. And I'm not convinced that they could understand, even if they really tried. And I'd like to think they tried. Even if many biblical commentators on Mark only see the disciples as the fools. I mean, Jesus is trying to get them to understand something that is never ever happened before, and it might be a little condescending on our part to think that we would have done better. We have seen the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the only reason we can get it. And truth be told, when the disciples in the gospel see that too, they will finally understand. But as of now, the disciples can only think about how great they are going to be. They think they've got it all figured out. And yet the gospel reading today and all of the rest of the readings that we've heard and worship on this 21st Sunday of Pentecost point out how small we are as human beings and how we could never have it all figured out. I mean, it would be pretty aggrandizing to think that we could. The thing is, God is always bigger than we think. God always does things bigger than we can comprehend. And what was happening with Jesus Christ definitely was bigger than anybody ever planned on. Sure, they were waiting for a savior, but not the savior of the world. Not the one who would conquer death and the grave. The disciples didn't get it because they couldn't get it. What God was doing was bigger than anybody could dream of. God is an awesome mystery. In our studies and egotistic tendencies, we might, we must never forget this. God is an awesome ministry, and just when we think we've got God figured out, we are always brought back down to reality. God can't be caught. God can't be conveniently put in a box of human definition. I mean, when the early church met to define some of the most basic understandings of God, they couldn't even get past saying that God is one and three and three and one. That's as clear as it gets. And if you think you fully understand that, then head off to seminary because God's got a lot more to teach you about that. It's not easy. 
It's not supposed to be easy. God is supposed to be a mystery to us in many ways. That's not to say that God can ever be understood in part. But to think that this whole faith thing is about learning knowledge, that's just not true. If anything, it's about accepting that God is always greater than anything we could ever dream up. It's about living with a faith that sees beyond what can be understood in the present world. And now with that said, we might start to think about how insignificant and unimportant we are, but that's not the point. We may be small, and in comparison, we probably shouldn't matter to the Creator, us small little humans, much smaller than ants compared to the grandeur of God. We probably shouldn't be significant enough to matter to God, and yet Jesus Christ has come to walk with us and prove to us that we are that we are worth everything to God, that we are worth even God's only Son, that we are worth suffering and dying for, that we are loved despite our small minds and big egos. We are forgiven and loved unconditionally. That alone is hard for us to get our minds around. Why do we matter to God? God knows. Thank God that God knows. If we're honest about our relationship with God, just when we think we've got it all, just when we finally get a breakthrough in understanding God, it is at that moment that we realize how small we are and how much more we have to go. The Synod Parish deacons in the congregation and any others who have spent time as adults in their faith formation know that the more you learn, the more questions you have. But there is something good in that. Because as you grow in faith, you begin to ask the really important questions. You start to get past the selfish foolishness that the disciples are stuck in in the gospel story today. It's sort of like how when you were teenagers, you knew that you knew more than your parents. And then a little later on in life, you realize that you didn't even know what you didn't know. And Your parents were really a lot smarter than you gave them credit for at that point. And then eventually, you learn that the whole time you were growing up, so were your parents growing up in their own way. And then you get to seeing them and respecting them as partners in the journey. It's sort of like that in our understanding of God. Eventually, we know that none of us really get it. That, they are, that we are walking this path together with each other and with Jesus Christ. You and I don't get it. We never fully will on the face of this earth, and yet Jesus Christ, who leads us and guides us, does. What we don't understand, our shepherd does. And there is some really good news in that for me. Knowing that Jesus is with us and guiding us down the path like sheep being led to pasture. There's great comfort that this is really how it works. That what matters the most is faith and not knowledge. That what we are given as a gift is what we really need. That our efforts will never and not get us to where we need to go. Not everybody can accept the fact that we are all like the disciples in the gospel story today. We are. We think we get it. We think that we are the right ones. We are wrong. And this is very troublesome for those who hate mystery, that really despise the fact that we are not equal to God in knowledge. Some are more comfortable with accepting the fact that we don't know, accepting that mystery is just a part of our relationship with God, and some really can't handle it. So they set up structures and systems to give them comfort, and they pretend like they understand, when again, in reality, none of us do. I spoke to a good friend of mine recently, an organist in the church, and we talked about the importance of this mystery that God is to us little human beings. He pointed out, based on a book that he is currently reading, that as church leaders, it is less our job to bring God to the people than it is to bring the people to God. 
we all know that God is always with us. The problem is that people just can't see it. They want to. They just can't, like the disciples in the gospel today. It's the job of the church to worship and invite others into the mystery. And for this reason, our worship is filled with it. Mystery, this great mystery that we grasp at but can never fully grab hold of. It's not our job to explain it away. It's not our job to make it easy, but instead to stand with others in awe and wonder of what God is really doing in our lives. We come to worship because we have witnessed it and experienced that awe. The fact that God is still mysterious to us is important. It's what helps us realize that we are to drop to our knees in the presence of God. It helps us to see that we aren't all that. And this world could use a whole lot more of that teaching in my mind. We think a little too much of ourselves sometimes. The biggest wonder, the biggest mystery in the whole Bible for me is what Jesus is talking about today. I know I took a long time to get here, but it's true. I mean, we have the creator of the universe, something on the scale that completely blows our minds, who comes down to earth to save us. God's self coming to us as the Christ to serve us. Us little, sinful, prideful humans. It makes no sense. The one who deserves to be served becomes the servant and then tells us to do the same to serve others also, to set aside everything else, all earthly honor and glory, and to just serve others. Truth be told, I don't get it. I wish I did. I sometimes pretend like I do. I mean, I hope I do a little, but no matter what, I know that I don't. But that is not going to stop me from doing it. I I mean, if God can do it for us, the greatest power in the universe coming to serve you and me, then who am I to say no when Jesus asks me to do the same? I don't get it. I really don't. As a matter of fact, the only thing I really understand about it is the effect that it has on the world. When we follow Jesus and his servanthood, it really is amazing what happens. I see it in the faces of people all the time, this great surprise that we would care, that we would lower ourselves to those of this world that deems unworthy really is this amazing grace that changes the world in ways more powerful than anything else. It's this grace today that makes no sense in the worldly ways. I thank God, I just thank God that even if I don't get it, at least I get to participate in it. It's true that we can never fully grasp God But the good news is that in Christ, God fully grasps us. God understands us completely and reaches out to care for us in ways that we could never even understand. We are in the loving hands of the life force itself. We are in the good hands of the one who understands what we don't, what we never could. The one who created it all and knows the big picture and plan. And there is great comfort in that. Even if it is still truly a mystery to us as to why God loves us so much. I pray that each of us will always sit in the wonder of why God loves us so much. And when we stand, that we follow the servant way that Christ emulated first for us. Amen.